Good morning. Today's lecture is blood supply of the heart and great blood vessels of mediastinum. The learning outcomes are describe the origin and course of right and left coronary arteries, meaning we need to understand from where right and left coronary artery arises and how does it course over the surface of the heart. What are the branches left and right coronary arteries give and what are the areas of the heart supplied by right and left coronary arteries, particularly for your assessment for end of PP1. We always ask this question that how and which part of heart supplied by the right and left coronary arteries. Coronary sinus is the largest vein of the heart. We need to know where it is located, where it is draining and what are its main tributaries. Remember, in arteries, we indicate the term branches, whereas in veins, we use the term tributaries. Great blood vessels of the mediastinum and clinical applications of the blood supply of the heart, particularly in uh, ischemic heart disease as well as uh, angiography. Now, looking at the this picture, you can see the ascending aorta. So, ascending aorta uh, at its very beginning, it produces uh, dilatations, balloon-like dilatations. And these dilatations are called aortic sinuses. So there is a aortic sinus on the right side giving rise to right coronary artery. So you can see the angiographic catheter here. And uh, there is another sinus on the left, which gives rise to the left coronary artery. And uh, particularly when the uh, both uh, right and left ventricle pumps together, the blood eject out of the aorta during systole. During diastole, when the blood rolls back, at that time, the perfusion of the coronary arteries are more. So blood flow rises more during systole uh, in the coronary muscle uh, and coronary arterial supply, but it falls during systole. Uh, one of the important thing is that, that when you are compromised arterial blood supply to myocardium, if you take rest, your diastoles actually increase and thereby perfusion will remove. You also need to remember there are three uh, structures on the surface of the heart, epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. Myocardium is very thick and this is the main uh, pump of the heart and it requires extensive artery supply and a high oxygen demand. So uh, without oxygen, this myocardium cannot work like 7-Eleven. Each square centimeter is perfused almost 11 meter long capillary bed and total cardiac output, which is about 5.5 to 6 liter all of all of us, 5% is perfused into the myocardium. Now, uh, if we look at the right coronary artery, right coronary artery passes between the pulmonary trunk and auricle. So this is right auricle and this is pulmonary trunk. So in between pulmonary trunk and right auricle, it arises from the ascending aorta and then courses in a groove. And this groove is between atria and ventricle. This is called atrioventricular groove. So anterior atrioventricular sulcus it is accompanied by anterior cardiac vein. It winds around the inferior border of the heart. Here it gives the marginal artery. This is marginal artery. And then it goes back towards the posterior surface. And it runs up in the posterior atrioventricular sulcus. This is also called coronary sulcus because coronary sinus lies here. So posterior atrioventricular sulcus or coronary sulcus, it lies there. And it gives a very important branch here posterior interventricular branch. And then it anastomos here with the uh, left coronary artery circumflex branch. So circumflex branch of the left coronary artery and right coronary artery, they join together in the coronary sulcus. If you look at the uh, left coronary artery, left coronary artery similarly 
is actually passing first behind the passing first behind the pulmonary trunk behind the pulmonary trunk and then between pulmonary trunk and left auricle and uh, then it divides into two one bending around the left margin of the heart this is called circumflex circum means winding round so circumflex goes around the left margin of the heart and in anterior interventricular sulcus it gives anterior interventricular branch so main two branch of the left coronary anterior interventricular and circumflex now this anterior interventricular another name more of clinical name is lad so clinicians know it as lad left anterior descending artery it is the main continuation of the left coronary artery in the anterior interventricular sulcus. It runs along with the great cardiac vein and it winds around the apex of the heart. So around the apex of the heart and posteriorly it ends by anastomosing with the posterior interventricular branch of right coronary artery. Now uh, the circumflex artery uh, winds around the left border of the heart and it runs along here in the posterior atrioventricular group or coronary sulcus and as we already told it anastomoses with the right coronary artery. Now let us see the branches of the right coronary artery. The first branch as it gives here is SA nodal branch. Remember SA node is a, a very important part, pacemaker of the heart. Uh, it actually dictates the heart rate. So SA node is principally supplied by right coronary artery. Only about 25% human, it comes from left coronary artery. And then it gives right atrium right ventricular so it's supply right atrium and right ventricular even anterior part of the ventricle and posterior part of the ventricle then right marginal branch on the inferior border of the heart which is mainly formed by right ventricle it also gives a branch to the upper part of the right ventricle this is called conus so the outflow part of the right ventricle is called conus or infundibulum so conus also is received branch from right coronary artery. Remember another node is there, AV node, that also receives from the right coronary artery. And the main important part, as we have already discussed, when it goes behind, it gives this posterior interventricular branch. This is very, very important clinically. Interventricular septum is the major pump of the heart. And the heart pumping mainly depends on interventricular septum. So posterior one third of interventricular septum supplied by posterior interventricular branch of right coronary artery. So remember, right atrium and right ventricle are mostly supplied by this artery. In addition, SA node, AV node, and posterior uh, part of the interventricular. Now, regarding the left coronary artery, first let us look at LAD. Left LAD or left anterior descending, it also gives branch to conus of the right ventricle. It gives main part, this LAD is supplying the anterior two-third of the interventricular septum. So interventricular septum differentiating between right ventricle and left ventricle, major pump of the heart, anterior two-third receives from the anterior interventricular branch or LAD. So you can see that LAD or anterior descending or anterior interventricular branch of left coronary artery supplies major par part of the anterior two-third of interventricular septum. It gives a diagonal branch, which supplies the anterior and lateral surface of the heart, both right ventricle and left ventricle. Circumflex branch, on the other hand, goes around the left border of the heart, supplying left lateral, sur left lateral surface of the heart, left marginal artery. It gives also lateral diagonal branch. And it mainly supplies posterior part of the left ventricle, posterior artery of left ventricle, as well as the atrioventricular branch supplying the AB bundle or bundle of these. 
So if we summarize, what are the parts of the heart? I already told you that this is one of the important things asked in the PP1 exam. So right uh, coronary artery supply all of the right atrium, most of the right ventricle, posterior one third of the interventricular septum, which is a major pump, SA node in majority of the subject and AV node in majority of subject. So if right coronary artery is affected by coronary artery disease, major uh, part affected is heart rate. There will be arrhythmia, abnormality in the rhythm of the heart pumping because the main, main generation of the rhythm is SA node, which is supplied by right coronary artery. The left coronary artery mainly supplies the pump of the heart. As you know, the major pump of the heart is left ventricle. So left ventricle, almost all of it, left atrium, most of left atrium, particularly posterior and inferior surface of left ventricle, anterior two-third of the interventricular septum, which is a major pump. And for the conducting part, which actually dictate the heart rate, bundle of his and right and left bundle branch supplied by left coronary artery. So you can see that major pump of the heart, left ventricle, left atrium, posterior inferior surface, the interventricular septum, anterior to third, all are supplied by left coronary artery. So left coronary artery, if it is affected in ischemia, the person will have major compromise in the blood supply to the whole of the body because the major pump is affected. Not only that, some part of the heart rate will be affected because bundle of is mainly supplied through Purkinje fiber, the rhythm of the right and left ventricle. Now coming to the dominance, what actually is the dominance? Now, as we have already noted that interventricular septum is a major pump right, located between right ventricle and left ventricle. And its anterior two third is supplied by anterior interventricular branch or LAD coming from left coronary artery. Posterior one third, whichever artery supply that is known as coronary dominance. In majority of the people, as the right coronary artery gives posterior interventricular branch and it supplies posterior one third of the interventricular septum, so most of us are right dominant. About 10 to 20 percent of the people, this posterior interventricular branch comes from circumflex artery, circumflex branch of left coronary artery. They are called left dominant. Now, there are intermediate also about 5% people. They get, they are very fortunate. They get both from the right and left, the posterior interventricular branch. They are called co dominant. Now, left predominant is actually dangerous. That means if anterior two third already supplied by LAD, if posterior one third also come from left coronary artery. So, if left coronary artery is blocked, then your anterior and posterior part of interventricular septum is wholly suffering from lack of blood supply. And naturally, for survival will be very difficult because massive output, output failure will be there. So remember that whichever artery supply posterior one third of interventricular septum is called dominant. Most of us, we are right dominant. There are a few people who are left dominant. Very little people, 5% are actually co-dominant and left predominant is dangerous. Now coming to the uh, branches of the coronary artery. Most of the coronary artery, they lie beneath the epicardium in the fat, sub-epicardial fat. But there are certain component of the coronary supply, which is towards the lumen. So mainly extra luminal supply and sub-epicardial supply. So what you can see is that sub-epicardial supply there are a lot of anastomosis. Anastomosis between branches of the coronary arteries. So about 15% occur at the capillary level uh, between the different coronary arteries. So if certain artery is blocked, another artery helps to supply and this is called collateral circulation. Remember that this anastomosis is not only at artery to artery level, arteriovenous and arteriosinusoidal. And one of the important things to note that if Young people, 40 years old, they have got blockage of this subepicardial branches. Their survival is difficult because anastomosis between the coronary arteries at subepicardial increases with age. Now, remember, there are another supply which is 
around the lumen and this luminal supply is most mostly uh, not so much profuse by uh, the same as subepicardial so usually coronary sub circulation is subepicardial and external now coming to the abnormalities as we already told that sa node branch usually comes from the right coronary artery but about 40 percent it can come from the left coronary artery and about 20 to 40 percent so this is usually called ghosted branch now uh, one of the important component of the heart is the venous drainage and remember the major vein of the heart is the coronary sinus and this coronary sinus where it is located it is in the posterior atrioventricular sulcus it develops from the left horn of the sinus venosus. It is about two to three centimeter long and it lies in the posterior atrioventricular sulcus along with uh, the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery and right coronary. Now, why I have written 60% of the venous blood? Because some arteries actually uh, do not drain into coronary sinus. They drain into directly into the right atrium. So those arteries, those veins, those veins, some of the veins which do not drain into coronary sinus, directly drain into the uh, right atrium, they constitute about 40%. So total 60% of the venous blood is actually in the coronary uh, sinus. So it begins here from the great cardiac vein, which runs on the anterior interventricular sulcus along with the anterior interventricular artery. So if we look at it here, So here you can see the LAD or left anterior interventricular branch. This one actually is accompanied by great cardiac vein, great cardiac vein. And right coronary artery lying here in the atrioventricular group is accompanied by anterior cardiac vein. Whereas uh, if you see the posterior part, if you see the posterior part. So in the posterior part here, uh, there is another vein which is called middle cardiac vein, which is accompanying the posterior interventricular branch of the right coronary artery. So we have already uh, noted the, um, the veins where they are located. So great cardiac vein at the anterior interventricular sulcus, a middle cardiac vein at the uh, posteriorly along with the posterior interventricular branch. So it runs down and right along with anastomosis between right and left coronary artery and it opens in the right atrium. I will show you where actually opens uh, later. So it opens in the right atrium between right atrioventricular orifice, tricuspid orifice and opening of the inferior vein. So what are its main branches or tributaries? Great cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein, and you can also see a small vein over here, which is called small cardiac vein. So great cardiac vein, uh, middle cardiac vein, Middle cardiac vein is uh, on uh, posteriorly uh, along the uh, posterior, uh, posterior interventricular uh, vein uh, where it going and then small cardiac vein. So easy to remember, great, middle and small are the three tributaries of coronary sinus. It also gives posterior vein of left ventricle and oblique vein of left atrium, which is also called oblique vein of Marshall, which is actually remnant of left common cardinal vein. There are uh, two veins which are not draining into the uh, coronary sinus. What are those? Anterior cardiac vein, which lies in the uh, atrioventricular groove along with the right coronary artery and veni cordis minimi. So these two veins directly open into the right atrium. So anterior cardiac vein are actually uh, variably sized vein arise from sternocostal surface of right ventricle drain directly into right atrium. So we'll see here the opening. This is the uh, right atrium opened. These are the rough part of the right atrium, musculi pectinati. Here is the uh, crista terminalis. This is the smooth part of the right atrium, inter uh, atrial septum. We can see fossa ovalis. We can see limbus fossa ovalis. Fossa ovalis is formed by septum primum. Limbus fossa ovalis is formed by septum secundum. Here is your atrioventricular uh, 
valve. That means this valve connect between the right atrium and uh, right ventricle, tricuspid valve. And this is the inferior vena cava opening. An inferior vena cava opening, there is a, uh, in, in the embryonic age, this valve was very uh, prominent, eustachian valve. Later on, it become uh, rudiment. So inferior vena cava opening and uh, tricuspid opening. So inferior vena cava opening and tricuspid opening in between is the opening of ordinary cells. So you can see right atrium, actually superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and coronary cells. Three structure opening in. Let us look at some of the questions. First question is about what? Which of the following coronary arteries mainly supplies inferior or diaphragmatic surface? So you have already noted inferior surface is posterior uh, posterior interventricular branch of the right coronary artery. So right coronary artery mainly supplies inferior or diaphragmatic surface. Next question, left border of the heart. So in the left border, we have already seen one important branch of the left coronary artery, circumflex. So circumflex supplies the left border of the heart. Which tributary of coronary sinus is located over the anterior interventricular surface, red cardiac vein, along with the LAD. Now, which artery is most commonly used to perform catheterization for coronary arteriography? The answer is femoral artery. Now, let us see how we do the catheterization and angiography. So, angiography is actually a procedure by which we can see whether there is any blockage in the coronary artery or not. So, under anesthesia, through the femoral artery. So this is anterior superior relax spine and symphysis pubis. Midway is the anterior superior relax spine and symphysis pubis. Mid inguinal point, one centimeter below is a femoral artery. We uh, prick the femoral artery and then you introduce the catheter. It goes to external iliac artery, common iliac artery, then descending aorta, and then it go to arch of the aorta, and then it go to aortic sinus. And from aortic sinus, once the, uh, the specialist put the catheter inside the right coronary artery and uh, put some dye to see the visualization of the right coronary artery, then you withdraw and put in the left sinus, and now you put dye in the left corner. Visualize both right and left coronary. Now, this coronary angiography is mainly done for radiographic visualization of coronary vessels by injection of radio of a contrast media and a specialized intravascular catheter are used. Usually, the, the patient are in senses. Uh, they do not uh, go for any general anesthesia. And what you see here is that uh, the purpose is mainly to define the coronary anatomy, anatomy, coronary anatomy, and particularly see how much percentage is uh, blocked by coronary artery in coronary artery disease. So here is the right coronary artery view of angiography. There are different view. Uh, this view actually is, uh, you can see uh, clearly the right coronary artery. So this is the main right coronary artery. These are conus branches. This branch actually going marginal branch and the inferior border of the heart. And then it continue posteriorly on the posterior surface. It gives posterior descending artery Posterior descending artery is supplying posterior one third of interventricular septum. And here it continues and joins with the circumflex branch. So you can see here, this part, there are block. So uh, the perfusion is not very clear and there is a block at the beginning of the posterior descent. Let us look at the uh, left coronary artery view. So this is left coronary artery. This is circumflex, circumflex and this is LAD anterior descending or anterior interventricular. So LAD giving here diagonal branches, diagonal branches, and uh, it is supplying the anterior interventricular septum. Circumflex, as you can see, is very uh, big here and supplying mainly the posterior surface and lateral surface of the area. There are a lot of uh, obtuse marginal branches coming from circumflex. So if you look at it here, that some of this uh, obtuse marginal branch coming from circumflex. They are blocked here. Nearly 70% stenosis you can see here. The, the, there are less perfusion in OM3. Uh, 
here also you can see certain block the led also so most common artery block is led as you can see here in this picture nearly 95 percent blockage normally uh, all of us normal person also about 50 percent block is quite common so more than uh, 60 70 percent is usually abnormal here you can see circumflex 85 percent there is no blockage on right coronary and after uh, they have uh, put stent and all you can see after putting stent uh, here it is zero percent block here it is still 20 percent which is normal now whenever we have got less perfusion in the coronary arteries always there is a pain and this is called this if this pain persists for a little time and disappear it is called angina pectoris so angina pectoris is actually due to myocardial ischemia so more, more, more commonly it is found on the uh, left border of left part of the left forearm and uh, left arm, particularly on the inner border. So left arm and left forearm, inner border, and then on the precordium, and not only precordium, it is also on the shoulder, on the um, mandible here, and also over the neck. Now let us understand uh, the anatomical basis of this chest pains. Remember that there are two cardiac plexus, superficial cardiac plexus and deep cardiac plexus. These are mainly supplying the heart. This cardiac plexus is derived from sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic increase the heart rate by acting on SA node and parasympathetic reduce the heart rate by vagus nerve. Now, the pain carrying fiber mainly comes from sympathetic. So, whatever we discussed in previous slide, angina, the main pain carrying fiber is sympathetic. Let us look at how sympathetic supply the heart. So here you can see T1, T2, T3, T4. These are the main areas of thoracic spinal cord. Uh, so spinal cord has anterior horn, lateral horn, and posterior horn. So from lateral horn of this thoracic spinal cord is coming here, going to the sympathetic ganglion, and postganglionic fiber is supplying the heart. So this T1 to T5, it is supplying not only that, some cervical part through superior cervical ganglia, they also supply the heart. So naturally, this cervical ganglia comes from C3 and C4. And this C3 and C4 also supply the neck. That means C3 and C4 skin branches supply the shoulder and neck and jaw. So when C3 and C4 supply the heart, and C3 and C4 supply also the skin of the shoulder, neck, and jaw. So due to the similar dermatomic supply, whenever there is angina, this anginal pain can be referred, and the patient may tell that I have got pain over the left shoulder, uh, neck, and jaw. So remember that anatomical basis of uh, cardiac pain over shoulder, neck, and jaw is mainly due to cervical ganglia and involvement of CGEs. Now, what about the uh, left border of the uh, left, uh, left uh, forearm and forearm, inner, inner border of the left arm and forearm? Here, mainly T1 to T4. Out of this T1 and T4, predominantly is T1. So, T1 supply the inner border of the arm and upper part of uh, forearm. So, as mainly T1 is supplying the sympathetic supply of the heart, and this T1 also supply the dermatome or skin of inner border of the arm and upper part of forearm. So anginal pain is more commonly referred to inner border of the arm and upper part of forearm due to T1 dermatome. So remember, this is more commonly asked. That means question can be asked that why this patient is feeling pain over the neck or shoulder or why the patient is feeling pain over the inner border of the left arm. So you have to explain the distribution that uh, here it is due to predominant T1 sympathetic supply and here it is due to C3 and C4 predominant. So this is actually for your assessment. I hope you will try uh, that uh, which coronary arteries or which coronary veins are this on your own. If you have problem, you can always SMS me in team's chat. So extrapolation to ECG, remember, that many of these arteries are supplying the different wall of the heart and some of the wall are actually, some of the wall are uh, more involved clinically 
by infection. So if someone is having a heart attack, that means there is blockage of the coronary artery. And in ECG, it is found that inferior wall, there are infarction, uh, ST elevation. So that is lead to lead three and AVF. So we uh, understand that there is uh, obstruction in the right coronary artery. If on the other hand, the uh, septum V1 and V2 or anterior wall V3 and V4 is affected, we understand that there is blockage of LAD or left anterior disc. On the other hand, if lateral wall means uh, V5, V6, AVL, uh, lead 1, these are affected, we understand that there is blockage of. Now, now we will go to understand the mediastinum. Remember, anterior mediastinum is just behind the sternum, middle mediastinum is the heart, and behind heart is posterior mediastinum. But above sternal angle, if I draw a line here, sternal angle, above sternal angle, behind the manoplium is the superior mediastinum. The superior mediastinum, anterior boundary is manoplium, and posterior boundary is T1 to T4. What are the structure? Superficial plane, mostly veins. So superior vena cava, right brachiocephalic vein, left brachiocephalic vein. And the ajaigos vein also drain into superior vena cava. These are the vena structure in the anterior or superficial plane of uh, the mediastinum. So superior vena cava, right brachiocephalic vein, left brachiocephalic vein, and uh, ajaigos vein. Now, what about the intermediate plane? Intermediate plane is the arch of the aorta. It gives three branch. This is right uh, brachiocephalic. So, uh, brachiocephalic trunk uh, giving the right subclavian and uh, right common carotid, uh, right subclavian and right common carotid. And then you have got a left subclavian here and left common carotid here. So, left subclavian, uh, left common carotid, this is actually wrong. This should be uh, left subclavian, uh, left common carotid, and brachiocephalic. Left, left subclavian, left common carotid, and brachiocephalic. So brachiocephalic trunk is the common trunk dividing into right subclavian and right common carotid. This is left common carotid and left subclavian. Three branches of arch of the way. There are two nerves. Anterior plane is the phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve comes down and supply diaphragm. And the vagus nerve, right vagus nerve and the left vagus nerve, they mainly supply the respiratory system, cardiovascular system, and GI system. So this left vagus nerve here, wind round, winding round the arch of the aorta, it gives a peculiar branch. It is called left recurrent laryngeal nerve. So left recurrent laryngeal nerve wind round the arch of the aorta and go above and supply the larynx. Deeper plane behind the arch of the aorta is trachea and esophagus. Trachea is the air tube and esophagus most posteriorly is the foot tube. If you look at the uh, total arterial uh, supply here, this is ascending aorta with aortic sinuses. After ascending aorta, uh, we get arch of the aorta. Ascending aorta main branches are right coronary artery and left coronary artery. Uh, arch of the aorta gives uh, brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, and left subclavian. And here, descending aorta in the posterior mediastinum, so many branches. It gives bronchial branches, that means uh, bronchi of the um, two lung, the conducting part of the lung, bronchial branches. Mediastinal structure, mediastinal branches, esophageal branches, esophagus runs over here. So it supplies this uh, abdominal part of the esophagus. It uh, sorry, thoracic part of the esophagus, thoracic part of esophagus, and it gives a lot of branches in the intercostal spaces. They're called posterior intercostal arteries. So there are 11 intercostal space in the thorax. Each of them, one artery is there, that is posterior intercostal. It supplies pericardium, pericardial branches, and also supply diaphragm, phrenic branches. Summarize, the descending aorta gives bronchial branches, mediastinal branches, esophageal branches, posterior intercostal branches, pericardial branches, and phrenic branches. Here we can see a pathology of the uh, arch of the aorta. The arch of the aorta is a, having a balloon-like dilatation, which is called aneurysm, 
and this aneurysm a radiographic picture is seen so more commonly aneurysm as you can see the arrow it actually obstruct trachea so trachea is just left and to the deep to the uh, arch of the aorta so any aneurysm potentially obstruct trachea causing problem in um, this patient so summary uh, particularly we should know uh, origin of left and left and right coronary artery which aortic sinuses they uh, give uh, origin they run between pulmonary trunk and auricle right coronary artery in atrioventricular group left coronary artery give two branch lad and circumflex circumflex wind around the left border lad goes in the anterior interventricular sulcus we have to again uh, understand what are the branches and more importantly which part supplied by right coronary and left coronary which i have already described what is dominance the part supplying the posterior one third of interventricular septum is dominant and geography and anatomical basis of angle particularly for exam remember branches which part supplied by rca and lca and anatomical basis of these are the learning resources okay thank you and if you have got any question you can always uh, uh, contact me in teams chat